So the next thing I would like to uh, talk about is Active Directory. And we will use this machine to install Active Directory. Uh, and how can I connect to this machine? Well, first off, I need the password for this machine. So I use the same thing as I did before to get the password. But instead use that machine name. Hmm? I think it's because I have this large font. So now I have that password and da -da -da -da, let's see. I will go from this machine to that other machine. And as I said, Windows has uh, RDP installed the, the client. You just search for remote desktop. And as you see, the client here looks a bit different. Um, you just type in the IP or the name, and the IP is the local IP. It's this one. My memory isn't that 55. And if I don't specify anything more, it will ask, ask me for the username and the password. Uh, if you want that to be saved, you can uh, add that here. And again, uh, the security question for the certificate. And since this machine I'm connecting to now is a core machine, I don't have a graphical interface, so I only get this uh, command prompt. So the first thing that we should do, since the administrator account doesn't has to have a password, we should change that to something uh, hard. <laughs> and we used uh, a command called net user and the username and administrator and a star. I'm logged on now as admin, so we have two accounts actually. The admin account has a hard password, which I get running that command, but the standard administrator account doesn't have that one. So we need to uh, reset that and create a password. So we create a hard password and confirm that. And you should of course do that on this server also. So that's how you do it in the uh, command line. If you wanted to do it in the graphical interface. No, 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 let's see where we do that. We do that in computer management. And we have local users and groups. And we have the administrator account and set password. So now we are a bit more secure. Uh, let's go back to the machine that is going to be a domain controller for our active domain, active directory domain. 
So the first thing we need to do is install uh, the role Active Directory Domain Services. And we can use that with PowerShell. We need to run PowerShell first because this is just the command prompt that you get by default, as you know from before. And then we use the import module server manager. And that is a PowerShell module that helps you install roles and features on Windows. So now we can use the add Windows feature uh, commandlet. And add the ad-domain-services. We will actually do this on our administrator machine also. And that's just to get the management tools to be able to administer Active Directory. We won't promote this machine to a domain controller. So now we can see it, how we do it graphically also. We add roles and features. It asks us which server we want to install it. We could use this graphical to install it on another server, but then we need to open some ports and, and stuff like that. And we have the Active Directory domain services. You could just install the administrator tools pack on this machine also if you want to. And that's it. So that is done. Uh, it asks us for Windows Update and not, not enable. It wants to be the, uh, up, uh, updated as pos most as possible. Uh, these machines have been updated before we made an image of them. So they should be updated uh, a couple of days ago. So you shouldn't be able to need to do that. On the Windows 7 machine, we have some problems still. We can't up, uh, install updates on them. Uh, I have no idea why, but we are working on that. So if uh, you're wondering if you can't run Windows Update on the Windows 7 machine, that's OK as of now, because we don't know what, why that is yet. So now we have installed the the binary files for Active Directory, we haven't promoted this to an uh, Active Directory domain controller yet. Uh, and if we would have done this with the graphical, we will, when this is finished, uh, get a little flag here that states uh, that you now need to promote this machine to domain controller. And then you could follow a wizard uh, of sort. But we won't use the wizard. We'll use a command to install Active Directory. Before we install Active Directory, we need to understand a bit about what will be installed. We have installed the binaries, but we haven't promoted this to domain control yet. As I talked about in the lecture, Active Directory is heavily dependent on DNS. And we don't have a DNS in our local network. We have uh, our machines connected to the DHCP that we got an IP from our configuration in uh, OpenStack. I have made some changes in my network. We will make some more and I will talk uh, to you about this in the next lecture. But just so you know how this network looks now, we have um, the router and we have two different networks the local area network and uh, something called DMC, uh, demilitarized zone. Here we should have our publicly accessed servers. And they, this network should be separate. So if one of these servers get hacked, the, the attacker won't be able to connect to our local area network. But these routers, how they work in OpenStack is that he will route the traffic through these networks. So we don't have that security as of yet. So we will probably set up, usually what we do is that we have a router and then we have some sort of firewall that will control the traffic between the different networks. We haven't gotten there yet. 
and I'm not sure if I should implement more knowledge into you <laughs> as of now. So we probably will skip that and have two different routers for the different networks. Uh, I will have to see how we will do that in the examination uh, assignment. But this is how the network is look now. So now I am connected to this Grandmaster Win, which I then use to connect to these two other machines. And this local area network has a subnet and it will has a DSCP server that will give out addresses in this space. And we will use these DNS servers so that these machines can go out to the internet and, uh, and get uh, information, look up addresses. But in Active Directory, as I said, uh, you need to have a local DNS server so that the machines can find the different domain controllers and global catalogs and stuff like that. But Active Directory will install a DNS server if it detects that we don't have a local DNS server. And it will also be configured to forward question it can't answer to the, uh, the root servers. So, that the clients. so we need to change our clients later on to the IP for this machine, the uh, domain controller. But now we have a dun dynamically uh, put IP address for this machine. And you should not have that on a DNS server because if it got a new address from the DNS server, you need to change the settings for all your clients. And that's not good. So I would suggest heavily that you will change the IP to a static IP for this machine. And you probably should not make a static IP within the span of these computers. Because if you do that, it, the DNS server doesn't know that this, you have statically assigned this address. It could and probably will assign this address to somebody else. And then we'll have some conflicts. So you should put, uh, get an address from without this scope, but within the same network, of course, the same subnet. Otherwise, you can't connect to it. So we could use uh, the sconfig to uh, configure the network somewhere. Da, 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 da. It's an eight. We want to set the uh, address. Static, and the address should be 10. Uh, zero twenty. We shouldn't use the one because we have set up that up for our router, the interface for the router. Uh, we could use the last address, uh, or just some address that you will remember. I use ten in this case, and we have the subnet, which is a twenty-four subnet. We have a default gateway. Yes, we have that. Uh, Zero twenty one. You could, of course, use the net sh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm remotely connected to this machine. So when I was connected to the dot fifty five address, I'm now disconnected, but that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, I will use the dynamic address for now, but you should change it to static address. I will look into why. I, I think it probably will, would have changed my uh, my um, firewall settings so that I, I won't be able to connect to it. But I won't take up time to look at it now. Uh, it has gotten the same address now, so hopefully I could connect to it again.
Yes. So we will use uh, the DHCP server and get the dynamic address, but you shouldn't do that when you install uh, the Active Directory. I will look into it and post something on our uh, course homepage. So let's go back and try to install the Active Directory. The first thing you need to do when you do install it with the PowerShell, you need to in, uh, import the module ADDS deployment so you get the right uh, commandlets. And then I have pre configured the settings. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can get these uh, commands on their website on uh, TechNet. Uh, but it's the same that you would specify if you do it in the graphical interface. Uh, the domain mode should be uh, Windows 2012 R2 for R. The domain name, I have chosen this media work. And the NetBIOS name and where it should install the logs and the uh, database. So that's pretty much it. It will need a, a password and this uh, is something that you create when you uh, create the first domain in a for new forest and it's if you need to boot Windows into safe mode and be able to uh, log in to locally to the machine. The, the domain controller for now will not be able, the user account that it had before will be erased. It will only have the administrator account left. That's why it was important for us to set a password for that. If we didn't, we will get an error that our administrator doesn't have a password. It's blank. You need to set that. Uh, but this password is if you wanted to be able to log in locally to the machine, uh, when you are in safe mode. So it shouldn't be the same password, it should be a different password which you should uh, store safely somewhere. And then it will install the first domain controller in the first forest and uh, the first domain. Uh, it will take a couple of minutes it will ha see, you see a lot of yellow warnings that it will find out that it doesn't have a DNS server, so it will install that. Uh, yeah, waiting for DNS to be installed. Uh, you could administrate the uh, Active Directory through PowerShell. Uh, it is quite hard to get a good overview of all your the UR structure and the users, so it probably will be easier to manage it from an administrator machine, which will have the graphical interface. But if you want to uh, create a lot of users, then you probably will do a, a PowerShell script that will do that for you. Uh, so we will use this machine to connect uh, and look at the Active Directory domain later on. But we need this to complete. It will then reboot by default and then it will use Active Directory uh, to authenticate users. So that's it, I will be logged out. Uh, what we should do then is join this computer to the domain so that I, that I could authenticate with the administrator for the domain. Otherwise, I won't be able to see uh, the catalog uh, and the users inside Active Directory. But we want the server to um, be properly rebooted. Then we need this computer to be able to find the domain. And how does he do that? Well, he will ask the DNS server. And he is now configured to use the name servers at LNU. And they, they don't know this, <laughs> this domain. So we need to change this to the domain and controller. And we can use that 
in here. So it still will get this IP from the DNS, but we could specify static uh, DNS servers. Let's see if the machine is up and running. Now we can't use this password and this account anymore because it is, uh, doesn't exist. The same uh, IP for the server, but we will need to specify an account in the Active Directory domain, which we created. And as you see here, it will state which domain, and this is the local uh, name for that server. So it's not that anymore. We created that with uh, MediaWork. Then we need a backslash. Then you see that it will change the domain to uh, MediaWork. And then the user account. And the admin user account doesn't exist anymore. But the administrator account does. And the password which we created with net use administrator. So it, this is not the uh, admin, uh, the password that we got from the Nova get password command in OpenStack. So it seems to work. We will then try to join this domain. And when we join a domain, we use that we go to the local server. And as we see here, we are connected to a work group, not the domain. Uh, and we just change this. Here, here you can also change the, the, username, uh, the computer name graphically if you wanted. But here we want to join the domain. And what this does, this computer will still have its own local users, so you could log on to the local machine. But you can also authenticate with an account that is in the Active Directory domain. Uh, so we need to join, and we just type the name. Media work. And then it will find the domain because of we, that we changed the DNS. And we need an administrator account to be able to add new computers. Uh, so this is the administrator account on the Active Directory domain. Welcome to the domain media work. We need to restart our computer or this server. And now I, meanwhile that is booting up, I could change my login information here because I could use this, but then I would log, uh, log in locally to the machine and that account doesn't have access to the Active Directory. So if I want to uh, display the Active Directory catalog, I need to be an administrator. And I need to specify the domain. So as you see, I now can authenticate with users from the domain. 
and since I installed uh, Active Directory domain services on the binary for this server, I can use the administrative tools that come with it to administrate my Active Directory domain. So in under tools here, we will have Active Directory users and computer, and a lot of other tools that are connected to Active Directory, of course. But since I'm logged in as an administrator for the domain now, I will be able to look at the Active Directory domain. I wouldn't be able to do that otherwise. So here we have the, the structure. And by default, we have some uh, groups and some users. Oh, we actually had the admin account been added here also. So that probably would have worked. But I don't know. Probably it will be a regular account. Let's see. Oh, it's also a member of the administrator. So it would it uh, would work with the admin account also. Um, and we can see here in computers that a computer account has been created for the machine that I joined. Uh, this is, yeah, this machine actually that I'm connected to now. So if I add more the Windows client, it will be added here also. So all computers that are joined into the domain will have an, a computer account here. The domain controllers have their own OU, uh, which uh, they are in. And that's because they need special uh, group policy and to be applied to them uh, when they are booting up. Um, I could now start creating my OU structure and users, uh, as we talked about in the, um, the lecture. And you just right click and add organization unit. And now we have an OU which we could apply group policy and add users and other uh, OUs in if we wanted to. Uh, I think I connected, yes. Just to see the power of PowerShell. I'm logged in as administrator. Here I have some script that I've been created before when I had a course in PowerShell. Uh, which will create a lot of users. So here we have a, a CVS file with a lot of users, 300 or so. They all have their departments and the telephone number and state. And I'll use this to create an OU. So I haven't tried this script <laughs> in this domain, so we'll see if it works. Uh, If PowerShell will. Oh, I, I added two. And you execute script the same way as you do in Bash by uh, dot slash and the script. This script is probably not. Uh, configure to work in this environment. Uh, it seems so though that it's starting to, yes, it's starting to create a structure. So you can imagine you probably will use scripts to do this because it will be quite uh, tiresome to do this manually. Uh, and in this, they will also probably create users when it comes to that. It's quite a big script. Now it's creating user in it. users. And as you see, I can run these on the grandmaster machine. The, this machine is not the domain controller. Uh, but I still can run this because I'm logged in as an administrator for the domain. Um, so that's why I can run these scripts. I w otherwise, I wouldn't be able to, to look in this uh, users and computers and see all the users and, 
uh, the OU structure and stuff like that. Uh, but it's hard to get a good overview uh, of this structure from just the console. So the users and computer snap-in is quite good to get an overview for, for, uh, for all these users. And now I could, if I connect the, the Windows 7 machine, join that to the domain, I could log on with one of these accounts on that machine. Uh, it would have created a CVS file here. This is my script that done this. And it's been generated password for all of these different users so that I could create the PDF and give to the user when they uh, sign their, their uh, agreement to our policy or what they do now. So this will actually work. I don't know what the first error was. Oh, I already had uh, uh, the folder that you tried to create. It was probably created when the, I run the first script uh, the first time. Uh, so that's it for installing Active Directory. We will talk a little bit more about Active Directory, how we use it. But now you know how to install it, how to connect computers to the domain, uh, and uh, you could create the OUs and stuff like that. So if we don't have any questions, I think that we will end this demo now. Let's see if I have that. It doesn't look like that. Okay. Well, thank you for watching.